With the help of a binding assay, researchers can observe the binding behaviors between the receptors and the ligands. It can be considered a practical application of the Clark's model. In Clark's model, we have D plus R equals DR. In a simple binding assay, we have P plus R equals PR. P is radio labeled. There are two types of bindings of a probe. The first type is the specific binding, which is PR. The other type is the non-specific binding, which equals a constant times the concentration of the probe. So what is specific binding? Specific binding is the binding of receptor and the radio label probe, whereas non-specific binding is the binding of probe and something else in the system. Say this is your system. You have receptors which have a limited number. You also have something else in the system. For example, other proteins, lipids. The probe can bind to the receptor and uh, the matrix beside the receptor. Because there is a limit number of the receptors, the specific binding is saturable. The level of specific binding is limited by the number of the receptors. However, the non-specific binding is not saturable. The higher the concentration of radio label ligand, the higher non-specific binding there is. But what do you observe is both of the specific binding and the non-specific binding. You can probably guess that the observed binding is not a saturable process because there is an unsaturable component in the system. However, we are only interested in the specific binding because we want to observe the binding behavior of the receptor and the ligand. So this is what we are interested in. This model can be considered an analogy of the Clark's model. We can write down the equation of state and the definition of Kp. After a routine derivation, we have the concentration of the complex equals RT times P over Kp plus P. So this is the specific binding. Observed binding or the total binding is the specific binding plus the non-specific binding, which is C, a constant, times mm. the concentration of the probe. So on the plot, we have this non-specific binding. It is a straight line because it is proportional to the concentration of the probe. It's C times P. We have the specific binding. The specific binding is the binding to the receptor. It is saturable because of the limit number of the receptors. And the observed binding is the sum of these two bindings. This is in a linear scale. If you plot it in a, in a semi-log scale, the specific binding will turn into a rectangular hyperbola. So it's like, it will have a EC50 and a B max, which is the maximum binding. Things can be a little bit more complicated when there is an, a competitor. This model represents the competition between an unlabeled ligand A and a radio labeled ligand probe. It is an analogy of the competition model between an antagonist and an agonist. Only the agonist can lead to a response. In the model, on this page, only the radio labeled probe can lead to a radio activity count. In other words, this unlabeled ligand will have an inhibiting effect on the radio activity count. As you can probably guess now, the more unlabeled ligand there is, the lower radio activity. The derivation of this new model is very similar to the derivation of the agonist and the antagonist competition model. We have the specific binding here. It has a rectangular hyperbola. In this equation, P is the independent variable, and this is the EC50.
So EC50 is associated with the concentration of the unlabeled ligand. The higher the concentration of the unlabeled ligand, the higher the EC50. This is the non-specific binding. Or you can write the unlabeled ligand as the independent variable. And this part is the IC50. This is also IC50. And this is the maximal extent of the binding, which is the difference between the binding in the absence of the unlabeled ligand and the binding in the presence of an infinite amount of unlabeled ligand. In this plot, we have curve A to curve K. In curve A, there is no unlabeled ligand. From curve A to curve K, the concentration of unlabeled ligand increases. As you can see in curve H to curve K, they're almost a straight line. That is because the concentration of the unlabeled ligand is so huge that all the receptors are occupied by the unlabeled ligand. So you don't see the binding of P and R. Therefore, you cannot observe any specific binding. And this straight line can be considered the non-specific binding of the system. In other words, you can regard this straight line as the background binding. In curve A, there is no unlabeled ligand. Therefore, there is no competition. The curve represents the total binding of the radial label ligand. If you extend the ends of these curves, they will approach a straight line that has the same slope of H and K. And the slope of the H and K is the constant C. I think I made a mistake. Here is non-specific binding. How do you get the extent of the specific binding? All you need to do is use the observed binding to subtract the non-specific binding. So this is the extent of the specific binding. So this plot is an extension of the previous plot. As you can see, when you increase the concentration of the probe, all the curves are approaching the straight line. This is the total binding. To calculate the specific binding, you subtract the non-specific binding from the total binding and what's left is the specific binding. So in J and K, there is almost no specific binding because the unlabeled ligand concentration is too high that the receptors are occupied by the unlabeled ligands. This is a linear plot and if you change it to a semi-log plot, everything turns into a rectangular hyperbola. In all three graphs, the radial ligand probe is the independent variable. However, if you use unlabeled ligand as the independent variable, you will see an inhibition effect, and you will get different curves like this.